Here we are on Conversations from Drumroll, this time with Mikey Fambro. Michael Fambro, Mikey Fambro. Both normal too. Beloved by all in the, in the Geneseo community and beyond. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you on the show. Well, thank you for having me. This is not your first WGSU appearance. It, is, it sure is. You're a fixture on the station. <laughs> But I just like that you're calling me a fixture, I'll take it. You are a fixture every Thursday night? Every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Yep, Jazz House Radio. Welcome to Jazz House, baby. Yes. Before we move on to your radio show, which I would, I would really like to talk about at, at, a little bit later, we'll introduce what it is that you do and how you got on the show. So you are a jazz-inspired polymer clay earring designer. Yeah. You you peddle your wares all over, sure all over town. Um, sure they're jazz-inspired, jazz house designs. Mm -hmm. And you come from a family with a rich musical history. I sure do. So tell us all about it. Okay. All right. Let's see. What do you want to hear about the family? Let's start with the family. The we'll move family. into your ja your love of jazz, and then your earring inspo. Work. Yeah. I can make that work. Okay. Yes. My father was a musician. His name's Mache Fambro. M I C H E F A M B R O. Go look him up. Um, fantastic musician. Wonderful. That was his life's work, and because that was his life, it inevitably became a family business. Um, so I was very invested in, in all of that. But then my father passed in December 2020. And when he did, I was left 500 bucks and his record collection. So, like musician to the end, for sure. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so this is in 2020. This yeah. is, you know, pandemics yeah. going on. And I was in theater. I mean, you can take me out of the theater, but you can't take the theater out of the girl. You know, I, I'm, oh, yeah. so it's always with me. But still, all the theater shut down, so I had nothing to do. So I was trying to find a new hobby. And um, crocheting, it was miserable. It was a nightmare. I tried embroidery. <laughs> it did not work out. But then I started playing with clay. And I would just put on one of the records from Dad's record collection, and I'd work with the clay. And I just, I got good. Yeah. I got really good. So, so yeah, it just kind of took off. I couldn't believe that it took off. Off, but here we are. Here we are doing like an interview. <laughs> I know, and it's amazing. I love it. I love jazz has. I love the concept. I love the art. So tell us a little bit about what what you're you're donning some at this sure. moment. I sure am. These ones are really basic. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> but yeah, today I just I was wearing a lot of patterns, so I needed just solid colors. But yeah, I love big bold earrings, big bold statements all the time. And yeah, they're all jazz inspired for sure. Like I listen to music and I make stuff. So how did you come up with Jazz House and really create the brand? Because it's so cohesive. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, I do my best thinking in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I guess I kind of came from a jazz house, although, I can't say my father's first choice was jazz. He just kind of tumbled into it because he was good at it. But he was raised in a literal jazz house, like all jazz all the time. So it comes, I'm a line jazz house. And then my husband, he's a graphic designer. And I just threw a bunch of buzzwords at him, like a horrible, horrible client. And I was like, it needs to be this and it needs to be that. And he came up with just, boom, that branding jazz house. Oh, I love it so much. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, he's brilliant. He's brilliant, but yeah. Cool. Yeah. So what has it been like to kind of grow the business? 2020 to 2024 has been quite a, it's been now you're four years in and you're prolific. You have pop-ups, you have, you vend, I see your earrings all over the place, especially in Geneseo. You have a loyal following. You know, those Geneseo kids. Not even hard. I mean, because I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know what I'm doing. I mean, story of my life, I love to fake it till I make it. Yeah. And uh, it's been a lot of that. That has meant a lot of adventures for me and a lot of figuring things out. Um, but yeah, growing this business, it's just been wild. I mean, every time, every year, it goes a little bit better. And I'm like, wow, people are like really digging what I'm making. But at the same time, I will have that thought and be like, wow, I'm doing really great. Like the earring business is taking off and people, they like me. They really like me. 20 minutes later, I'm like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever done. I mean, you're just, the imposter syndrome is real. Yeah. Is very real. And I struggle with that yeah. continuously. I'm I mean, sure. The struggle is not over, but yeah. Yeah. It's not easy. Yes, as a as a gal, as a 23-year-old gal hosting a, an internet podcast and radio show, I can relate to your imposter syndrome concerns and it's very difficult to manage. <laughs> it's real, it's so real. Yeah. I mean, 
it's really hard um, to, like, I don't like calling myself an artist because I can't draw, yeah. I can't paint, you know, I, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing things. Yeah. And is that what, is that what defines an artist? It's and like, you're creating you art. made the thing. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I don't know. I, I've been pond. we've had, we've had this conversation. I've, I've also been pondering this. Um, Mikey, Mikey and I spend quite a bit of time together because she hosts Jazz House Radio right. on 89.3 WGSU, right. Genesee's Voice of the Valley. So tell us about that. That has been something that I have really thought was a cool tie into your brand. <laughs> That's, I, mean, I guess the ultimate like utilization of your brand and leveraging yes. media and the whole thing. It really is. I mean, first off, first off. Jazz House, at the end of the day, is all about making sure that I get to make sure my dad's name is heard and his music is heard still. This is my way of trying to maintain his legacy. Yeah. Um, and then this radio show, I mean, again, this is a bit of a fake it till you make it situation where the opportunity <laughs> came up and it was like, okay, let's figure this one out. Yeah. And it ties in so beautifully. I mean, it really helps me celebrate the love of music for one, mm -hmm. and then educate people on jazz history. I mean, that's a huge passion of mine. Um, and it's fun learning, it's fun playing the music. I mean, it's a good excuse to listen to so much new music. Oh, and yeah. of course, I always play jazz music at the end of the show. Yes, and it's so touching. The first time that you did it, I like got choked up. I was like, oh my God. Like, I would have cried on the radio, like, if I were you, like, announcing that. But that's such a cool, it's been such a, a joy to listen to the show and see what you've done. So how do you approach creating a curriculum? Because you really do have an educate. listening to your show, you leave learning something new. You learn new music, artists you might not have heard before. Uh, well... I try to come up with themes. I'll be honest with you, I just listen to music all the time. And as I'm listening to stuff, I just let, I let the random stuff happen. You know, yep. the Discover Weekly, the just listen, play me some stuff. And as I listen, I will figure out what theme that it belongs into or it gets a new classification yeah. of theme. But then just, you know, going through, okay, well, here's the theme, here's the songs. And then I just go through and I research every person to bits and pieces. Um, and that's fun. I mean, that's always fun. You really got to do some digging, though, to make sure that you're finding legitimate information that it's, you know, corroborated oh by all the parties. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm learning some cool stuff. Good. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad that your show has worked out as well as it has. It's been an absolute Thank delight. Thank you. And you're the one that made it happen. Like, you made it happen. <laughs> it's been so cool. Sarah DeVito for life. <laughs> I'm a big fan. <laughs> Thanks for having um, Yeah, I relate to that. I had my Grateful Dead radio show was was very similar and it was very rigorous. But so back to your business. Um, yes. So you have Jazz House. You're you're the woman in charge. Jazz cat in charge, baby. Yeah. So what what is that like as the sole proprietor? You you run the whole thing. You run the show. It's kind of niche. Yep. So what's that like? hard yeah <laughs> it's hard because there's nobody telling you what to do I mean it's hard to regulate yourself you know when you go to work for somebody else there's very it's very simple it's, very it's kind of obvious dry, you know yeah. it's obvious they tell you what to do you do the thing you go to work from nine to five you're done mm -hmm. there's no off switch really mm -hmm. it feels like any time that you spend for yourself is time wasted. Yeah. You're like, I could be working, I should be working. So I'm the worst boss in the world. You know, yeah. I'm just work yeah. myself to pieces. Yeah. But yeah, it's hard. It's really hard to um, to just try and make something happen all by yourself. I know. And figure out all the pieces. You know, you're you're the accountant. You run the books. You're also the producer. You're the social media manager. You're you know all all the things. Every mm -hmm. single thing that a business needs to do that's you. Yeah. That's hard. It, it seems very rigorous. So were you, tell us a little bit about the, the actual business side of things. Because I think that with art, it's easy for folks who are not directly involved with the world to really understand the reality of being an artist and how little of it is the time that you're taking to do the art. Because you, you must have had to establish the, the DBA or the LLC or whatever the heck. I mean, I have to say, I'm not a very good business person. Yeah. I pretty much, you know, Googling, like, how to run yeah. a small business and yeah. trying your best to do those things, to get your tax ID number, to you know, do all that. I will say that 
the internet does make things easier because you mm. are able to actually learn how to do these things on your own, which is nice. But I can't say that I always know that I'm doing it right mm -hmm. um, or that I'm doing it to the best of my ability because I, I so love making the art and the problem with earrings mm -hmm. is that um, you make them, they sell, and you have to make another pair. Yeah. Um, and that sounds, that sounds really obvious, but there are certain mediums, like say if you make um, prints, you make art prints, yeah. is that you make the art once and then you can just make as many as you need. But this, you have to be physically keeping up with the amount of stuff that you're making. I yeah. mean, it's, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, the business side of things, I mean, I don't know that I'm the best person to talk on that because I'm not the best business woman. I'm just out here struggling, trying my best. I think a lot of people are finding themselves in that position though, and I think that it's pretty relatable. I have certainly found myself kind of floundering. I have not, I suppose not floundering, but really having a hard time figuring out how do I proceed with this freelance portfolio? How do I proceed with this printmaking endeavor that I have? stumbled upon and and I think that a lot of <laughs> or my crochet business or whatever whatever these like things are that you take up and I think a lot of folks in our community are really into that and and I think that it's helpful to, to hear from people that it's this not is, obvious it's not obvious it is a struggle to this day I don't know if I'm doing things right you know I'm, I'm trying to do things as legally and wonderfully as possible <laughs> um, but there's so many things that I just don't I don't know yeah uh, and I wonder how much my business could be better if I knew all those things. But I just feel like artists today are in such a pickle where you're expected to know how to do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, just just the social media part of it, for instance. It's like not only am I supposed to be making these things and running a business, but now you've added in this need for content. Yeah. And that it feels like a, dist a distraction. It's like, I don't want to be making these videos and stuff. I just want to be making the art. Yeah. So yeah, it can be frustrating a little bit. How do you balance that? Because especially with something so procedural as making earrings, like you see all these videos of people doing stuff like that, like on TikTok or Instagram or whatever. So do you, is there, do you feel a lot of pressure to keep up with that style of content? I do feel an enormous amount of pressure. I do not meet the pressure because yeah. sometimes I will ignore it. And I feel like that does probably damage the business. If I was better at that stuff, I wonder how much better I'd be doing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sometimes I have to, I'm sitting on the merit of my work, <laughs> just hoping that people find me. And to be fair, that, that has kind of worked for me in some in some ways, but I just- We're four years in. We're four years in. I mean, and that says something, yeah. like we're four years in, we're still kicking, but yeah, I wish I was better yeah. at doing all that stuff. It feels like a distraction. It feels like this world is demanding too much mm -hmm. from artists and giving them too little. Yeah. You know, oh, it's a hobby. Right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Making little trinkets. Yeah. It's crazy. I hate that word. <laughs> Do you find a lot of people kind of being like, oh, yeah, Mikey's got her little earring business? Yeah, I mean, Mikey's got a little. The people that know me are like really, they're really proud because I think that they've never seen me be quite so good at something. <laughs> but like people out in the public, they're, they're the harsher critics, yeah. for sure. Because a lot of people come up and they will say, um, you know, oh, I could do that. And the truth is, is that they could. They absolutely could do that. Anybody could do this. It's just a matter of like, well, are you? Yeah. Well, then it's like, okay, then do it. Yeah. You know, you do it. <laughs> yeah. This makes me sound bitter. And I'm not at all better. Yeah. Um, it's just a reality of what you're yeah. doing. Like it's 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 an unseen part of of being an artist. It is. Especially when it's something. It's like a practical medium. Yeah. It, it very much is. And you can buy a card of earrings at Claire's for five dollars and get thirty for sure. earrings. For sure. You know. Yeah. And then it'll turn your skin green. But. And then it will turn. <laughs> yes, that is yeah. so true. And don't get your ears pierced at Claire's. This no. is just for anybody watching. Think about going to Claire's. Get your ears pierced. Don't do that. I got I got mine pierced at Claire's, and I wish I didn't. Same. <laughs> I got, I got other ones done at other places, but yeah, no, uh, I agree. Seconded. Yeah, yes, one, thank you. Second, third. Cool. Clipped. Um, what was I going to say? Dang, you're going to have to edit this part out. This one's messy. What were you talking about? <laughs> we were going over the... Um, oh, people in the public. Yeah, like, how do you deal with that kind of scrutiny? <laughs> I guess is the more strong way to put it. Well, okay, and that's that's kind of a... That's a different part of it. Yeah. Um, 
when you go out there for the first time, no matter what you make, yeah. but if you make it and you go out into the public and you put your things on a table and you say, this is, this is what I've made, it feels so personal because mm -hmm. you made those things with your own hands. You know, they're like your well babies. Listening to your dad's music. So personal. So personal. <laughs> and so then when people walk by and they look and they keep walking, or they look and they make a snarky little comment and they keep walking, that can that can hurt and it did hurt for the first little bit until you kind of get to the place where you're like, wait a minute, you know, this is not this is not for everybody. Yep. This is not everybody's cup of tea. Yep. Um, and that's okay. You know, that's okay. It's when that person walks by the first time and they see it and they go, oh, and they're so excited and they're like, oh my God. And you're like, yes. And then it all comes together and it's all worth it. And it's all so, it's all so good. It's such a gratifying moment. That's awesome. Oh, it's really good. How did you get your feet with selling your art? Did you start online or go on a vending um, no, I actually, opportunities or what? I, at first, this wasn't intended as really a business. I was just having fun doing it. But then it was the Geneseo Festival, in fact. Oh, okay. And I was just like, I have so little many. little summer fest? Yeah, the little summer fest. I was like, I've got so many earrings. Maybe I'll just give it a try. So I went out there. And that's how I met Erin. Has she been on your podcast? No, she has not been on the oh, podcast she hasn't, yet. But she might be. Um, but yeah, people were like buying them, and I was like, oh my god, maybe this could be a thing because it's so much fun to do, and it's it's also, I mean, in juxtaposition to theater. Yeah. When I was in theater, everything is done by team, mm -hmm. and everybody's got their very specific roles, and so it's it, that's really nice in so many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, but here it was like I don't have to answer to anybody. I don't have to collaborate with anybody. Yeah. I don't need to wait on other people. If if things are lacking, it's because I screw up. Yeah. But if things are flourishing, it's because I'm doing really well. So like it's it's fun just answering to myself. Good. Uh, yeah. Cool. What are some of the biggest challenges, Ben, that you've faced since you've kind of started to, to do this, other than the demoralizing moments that happen when you're out? The biggest challenges, I mean, I suppose just trying to keep up with it all mm -hmm. and certainly managing your time. Yeah. Um, that's really that's really difficult. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, you know, I'll be working first thing in the morning until 2, 3 a.m. and yeah. still feel like I haven't done enough. Yeah. Uh, that's a challenge and then certainly this is kind of seasonal work because mm -hmm. I mostly you know most of my sales come from in-person stuff so that means that half of the year it's festival time it's market season and everything is great but then those other six months you know, you're kind of you're like okay. waiting and making and making this is the time of year where I'm just like a little bear you know getting ready for winter or whatever i'm yeah. just making so much stuff so that i'm able to maintain the the festival season but it is a challenge it's a challenge managing your time it's a challenge trying to figure out all this stuff on your own yeah it's a i mean all the things that we've talked about oh, yeah. needing to take all the photography needing to do your taxes and figure out mm -hmm. you know deductions and this and that and stuff like that this is a challenge yeah it's hard so you do mention your background in theater, and I'm interested in touching on that a little bit. So tell us about what, what you were doing. Oh, theater was my life. I mean, and theater is still very much a part of my life, uh, but now I don't exactly have the time for it. But theater, then you I do a little bit theater. of writing. A little bit of writing. It's always there for you when you're ready to come back. That's the beautiful thing about theater. But yes, I, um, I taught, I, I've written a lot of plays. Uh, directed, acted, you know, Jack Valtteri is Master of None. Yeah. This is the story of my life. <laughs> yeah. Master of Jazz has? Master, well, we're getting there. Right? <laughs> we're getting there. Cool. You know, I've been, I've been good at a lot of things in my life and great at very little. Yeah. Um, but it's not a bad way to live. It's, it's constantly adventuring and learning new things and... I mean, I guess I kind of rather live life this way, where I get to sample a little bit of everything. Yeah, a meandering path. A meandering path. I like I like a meander. I've been on a meandering path. We love dabblers. Right. We love people that dabble. Yeah. That used to be a whole thing. I mean, but then just coming from a line of people that gave everything to their medium. You know, my mm -hmm. my father, from when he was a child up until the day he died, it was non-stop guitar. Wow. All day, every day, guitar. And he spent a lifetime mastering his craft, and he really did. I mean, I don't know that he would feel that he was a master, but like, I don't think he could get any better. Okay. And then there's people like me that maybe aren't aren't great at everything, but you can get pretty good at a lot of things. 
things. Yeah. Flexibility, Flexibility. is pretty important. Yeah. Transferable skills. All of that is a huge asset, especially in today's world, I think. But cool. So what are some of the highlight moments of your personal um, artistic endeavors been? Some of those moments where you're just like, wow, this is why I'm doing this. I mean, for sure, I gotta say, the radio station has been so cool, so, so cool. That was, that felt like, oh my god, like, people are, are knowing that, like, I'm a jazz cat, man, like, we're doing it, we're getting jazzy, and, like, people are are tuning in, people are listening. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, and also seeing your earrings in the wild for the first time, meaning that, like, you know, you stumble upon somebody that's wearing them. Wow. That's so cool. You're like, wow, people aren't buying these because they, like, feel bad for me or just because they feel obligated toward me. That's more imposter syndrome. You always have that that doubt and that feeling that like everybody's just being nice yeah but at some point the conspiracy of niceties grows too big yeah and you're like you know what i don't think there's many people care (laughs) maybe i'm actually like doing a good job i like my art (laughs) Uh, but yeah the radio station's been a real highlight for me that's it's it's been such an opportunity it's been (laughs) so much fun it's been just such a wonderful excuse to to keep going and Um, i'm just i'm just so stoked on that radio man yeah you've been a lovely staff member as well. I'm, del- I'm delighted to have you on the team, yeah. And it's been fun to be able to introduce our student music department and our student music director to having an actual like adult staff manager, like a, an adult staff member to kind of help manage and things like that. So yeah, that's crazy. I that's crazy that I'm the adult now, and I realize that I am. Well, you're the adult, uh, yeah. Like, I, it's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> what have some of the biggest challenges been in your time, kind of establishing yourself as be a, as an as an artist or or a maker maybe may feel more appropriate in your case i don't know the biggest challenges in establishing myself as a maker it's a good question um it's a good question because i'm trying to find things that i haven't already said but yes the yeah. self-doubt yeah that's your i feel like probably everybody's big worst enemy yeah. you know is their is their inner thoughts just being like you're not good enough yeah uh that's certainly a struggle just trying to figure out all this, the social freaking media part of it, God. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's hard, especially in polymer clay where during the pandemic, a lot of people took up this hobby. Yeah. I am not, this is not a unique <laughs> thing to do. A lot of people yeah. took it up and there was a certain pressure to kind of keep up with the Joneses, make, make stuff that everybody else was making and that I could see was really popular. Yeah. You know, I really favor big earrings, big colors, bold patterns. Like I am not messing around and, um, and just trying to stay true to myself, I guess. And yeah. Eventually, I just kind of took up the little motto, like, I make what I make, and they take what they take. Yeah. <laughs> and, and just kind of tri- gave up a little bit, trying to make what everybody else yeah. wanted. Yeah. And, um, but I, at the same time, it's a challenge, but I think I couldn't have made a better decision in that regard. I think that that's why the pieces feel so much more genuine and authentic. Yeah. Because uh, they, you know, they come from just a place of passion. I just make stuff based on the whims and what the music feels like to me, and it's, you know, yeah. I make what I make. Cool. And then they take what they take. What is your favorite part of being the uh, the mother of jazz house? The mother of jazz house. What is my favorite part? Um, I mean, I just I do love when you put all the pieces finally together and you see them on the card. Uh, that's really exciting for me that's that's probably literally my favorite part but but really it's also the fact that this has gotten to grow you know and and the fact that I get to listen to so much music I know that that seems silly you can do that literally with anything but here it's it's part of it you know I have to listen to the music to a make sure that it's legit like it needs to my work has to marinate in jazz a little bit so so yeah it's marinating jazz oh I said a and B. <laughs> I have no B. I have no B. But yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Well, that's great. I'm so glad. I, I love your earrings. Thank you. They are, they are big. They're available at the Gallery in the Valley. They sure are. They're available lots of places. You can find them online. You can find them at Jiva Theater. You can find them at Salty Boutique right now in uh, Park Avenue, Rochester. Um, they sell out of... Ronan Art and Apparel in Vermont. 
Wow. And that's cool. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, you can find me in person. Cool. Definitely all summer. I'll be out and about. How many earrings do you think you've made total? Thousands? Thousands. Thousands. Easily thousands, yes. Oh, my house is covered in earrings. Oh, really? <laughs> my house is so covered in earrings. And one of these years, I'm going to finally build myself Jazz House Studio. Yeah. But it's not today. Today, everything is covered in earrings. Yeah. <laughs> How many do you go through, like, in a in a festival season? Ooh, how many do I sell in a festival yeah. season? Um, I think last year I sold about 2,000. Oh. It's wow. a lot. I mean, it's, it's a lot of earrings. It's a lot of earrings. That is a lot of earrings. How, what is your summer like with festivals being such a big part of it? You know, it's, it, it's, um... It's nothing new to me because when I was a kid, of course, my dad was a musician. So all we would do was travel around and go to gigs and we'd be at all these festivals and all these jazz festivals and, and whatnot. Um, so this just feels like, okay, I know this game. But yeah, you packing up, moving on out for these weekend festivals and just hustling out of It's fun though. You get to meet so many people oh, yeah. and just... It's, you know, the kids have a great time too because festivals are fun oh, yeah. and you just get to see all this great art and festival food. Let's not, oh, let's yeah. not forget about festival food, which is always delightful. But yeah, festivals for me are busy um, and fun. Cool. And fun. And hoping to God that it doesn't rain. <laughs> oh man. It is, it is hard having like a weather dependent yeah. situation. So yeah, things can, there are outside factors that affect every festival. I, that hadn't occurred to me. Oh, wow. God. Wind. Oh. Yeah. Wind is wind is a beast. Wow. Wind is a beast. Because they might cancel an event for rain, but they do not cancel for wind, and wind is awful. Thank goodness. I'm always grateful that uh, the clay, it doesn't break. You really have to work. You gotta, like, to, like, you have to, like, saw it. No, you can, they bend. Wow. <laughs> they bend there it's nice. kind of flexible so that's a nice thing about what i do at least that if there is wind nothing breaks because nothing okay. is worse than when you're sitting out there oh, and the Everything. wind's going and you hear from down the way and you're like no somebody's having a terrible day no but yeah that's awful has the community like the arts community been what's your connection with the rest of the community of the artists been like yeah. love the arts community. The arts community is one of the most supportive freaking places on the face of the planet, and I will die on this hill. They are amazing. Um, in the polymer clay world, at least, specifically, there's, like I said, there's a million people making polymer clay, and at least within this region, there's a couple other makers that also favor big, bright colors and, and uh, big statement earrings. There's not too many of us, but those of us that are there, we, we love each other. Like Good. we really do. And we'll definitely spread the word. Like we regularly communicate. They'll write to me and they'll be like, hey, I did really well at this festival. You should you should be here. Wow. You know, stuff like that. It's just, it's just so nice that they really support each other. They hype each other up. Yeah. You will find these people, your competitors mm -hmm. in many ways, blowing you up on, on their gram, being like, this is another really great maker. I just, I, it's such a positive and uplifting community we share tricks and tips and hacks you know there's there's very little safeguarding yeah. um, between people that are really taking it seriously and that's it's wonderful that must be so nice i think that there's a very competitive spirit in some fields and it seems yeah. like you have found it's not it's not here it's not here and that is so good because yes in so many places it is so cutthroat and you know trickery is afoot yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can't really trust a lot of your competitors yeah. here it's just it's just such a supportive and warm community that are just hyping each other up and making each other feel good. So yes, shout out to Blue Bassoon, Charlie Blue, you know, all these, all these people that are out there doing really, really cool, funky earrings. Cool. Well, we are nearing the end of our time together. So do you have any final messages, shout outs? We cannot have any commercial calls to action on the radio that you can share information about future opportunities for people to find your work or okay well i'll just tell or you messages. where i happen to yeah. be yeah if you if you wanted to say hi but this is not a call to say hi to me you may just if you want if you're out and about and you don't have anything to do art jam uh going down at the lab in rochester may 3rd i'll be there so if you happen by 
Thamata, which is a very cool place filled with um, all kinds of artists. It's at the Armory, uh, the Culver Road Armory, okay. May 4th. I'll be there. Um, and then, gosh, when am I going to be May 11th? Oh, the Heads of Tails Market in Buffalo. I'll be there too. But yeah, there are all kinds of like shouting out artists and stuff. Oh, snap. Where to even begin? Go check out Aaron Hannafin Sweeney's work. Uh, Chelsea, you had her on. Chelsea Kowalik. Yep, go check her out. Sure can creative. She's really cool. The Gallery in the Valley. Have you been out there, seen the Walters work? Come on. Joanna and Keith Walters are awesome. And Maddie Rice. And Maddie Rice. We love Maddie and Ray. Ray truly, we love him. Logan. Logan. Freaking the, the freaking. <laughs> I can't remember her last name. Logan Turner, maybe? That sounds right. Yeah. Shout out to Logan. That's the Gallery Gang. That's the gallery gang. Amazing artist. Um, but I guess what I would really like to say, if we're at the end of our time here, is really go check out Mache Fambro. M-I-C-H-E-F-A-M-B-R-O. His music catalog is enormous. You're bound to find something that you like. Um, he put a lifetime into his music and it shows. And his music deserves to be heard. <laughs> uh, me and my family are also working on a documentary about his life that's been... I guess four years in the making, yeah. and it's it's getting it's getting to the place where it's getting ready to be like polished wow. and put together and put put out. But yeah, we're really excited. About and he that. also has a YouTube channel. A YouTube channel that has tons and tons so and tons much. of amazing content on it. Yeah, he's he's not only is he really talented. He's a left-handed player who plays the guitar upside down and backwards without restringing his guitar. Not only is he outrageously talented, but he's funny. He is a funny, funny dude. <laughs> he's, he's my favorite weirdo on the face of the planet. Oh my gosh, I love him so much. So yes, go check out Mache Fambro. Mache Fambro. Good. Jazz House Radio at 9 o'clock on Thursdays on WGSU. That's right, Jazz House Radio. Come and hang out with me, Jazz Cats. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Mikey. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show. I've been watching to for a long time, so I'm happy we made it. Thank you so much. <laughs> and this is uh, Mikey Fanro and Sarah Vito reminding you to always tip your local jazz cats and stay jazzy. <laughs>